Okay, so our first question here, guys, is one of those ones where we've got two parts, and we need to find the average over the whole trip. Okay, the thing we need to remember about questions like that is that the average speed is the total distance over the total time. Right, which may mean we need to do a few calculations with the individual parts so that we can have time for both and distance for both. Then we can do total distance and total time. Right? So that's how number one is going to shape up. So if they have givens, okay, you can give them a mark for that. Okay, part one, part two, whoever they organize, as long as they've got givens written down. Okay. Um, not sure why I have two in there for givens, but I do. So... Oh, I know what it is. It's the conversion of kilometers to meters. Okay, so if they converted their kilometers to meters, okay, make sure that you give them a mark for that as well. Okay, um, so for part one, we know that it moves at seven meters per second, and it does so for 1.2 hours. Okay, so we have to convert the hours into seconds by multiplying by 3,600. Okay, so there's our time for part one. We need to find the distance for part one, or we can't do d total over t total. All right, so we manipulate v equals d over t by multiplying both sides by t. So d equals v times t. All right, 4,320 times 7. So give them a mark if they've got this step. They don't have to necessarily have the right answer as long as they have the method right. All right, if they went d equals v times t, they can have that mark. All right, now I've got the distance for both parts, but I don't have the time for part two. I have the speed and I have the distance. So I've got to use those to get t. So again, v equals d over t. And when I manipulate that for t, I multiply both sides by t. And then I divide both sides by v. And I get t equals d over v. All right, so give them a mark if they have t equals d over v. They don't necessarily have to have the numbers right here. 10,000 over 6.1 okay, gives us 1,737.705 seconds. Okay. Now, um, from there, now we can do the total distance over total time thing. Okay, we'll have um, the distance from part one, 30,240 meters plus 10,600 meters divided by the total time, 4,320 plus 1,737.705. So if they have this, give them a mark. If they have something like this, give them a mark. Okay, and then they should get as a final answer 6.74 meters per second. Okay, so one mark for that. So that first one is out of seven. Okay, questions on number one. We're all good there. Okay, for question number two, the Cannonball Run. Terrible movie. Terrible. Okay, it's supposed to be one, it's one of those lousy 80s comedies that you probably never watched. Be thankful it's two hours of your life. You'll never get back. Okay, anyway, in this, there's a cross-country race going on between a whole bunch of competitors. But the two big ones are this big redneck mobile, okay, with the big giant tires, jacked up pickup truck, okay, and essentially a Lamborghini Countach, okay, the one from back in the 80s. All right. Um, Interestingly enough, in this movie, they actually skip the Lamborghini off of a lake okay, in order to get over it, which the Mythbusters later proved is possible, actually. Okay, given a car being flat enough and with the engine mounted in the middle, where it is in a Lamborghini, okay, the weight balances out and it'll actually strike the surface of the water like a stone and skip once off of it okay, and actually go to the other side. So uh, that's one of the things that happens in this very bad movie. What we need to find here is how long does each car take? Shortest time wins. All right, so what we have to do then is we know that the car okay, has to travel 980 kilometers and it can move at 110 meters per second. Well, that means we have to convert the 980 kilometers to what? Meters. Well, that's not hard. We just multiply by 1,000. So T equals, so give them a mark for their givens. Okay. Um, and then T equals D over V. We'll give them another mark here for doing those conversions okay, of kilometers to meters. T equals D over V, 9, 980,000, sorry, divided by 110, okay, should give me 8,909.1 seconds. 
Everybody with me there? Yeah? Now, for the truck, the truck, okay, goes 295 kilometers, but travels at one-third the rate of the car, 32 meters per second. So we take our time, time equals D over V, that's 295,000 over 32, and we get that the truck takes 9,218.25 seconds. You can give them a mark for that. Okay, That means, for one mark, the car wins. They did have to actually say who would win as their final answer, since that is what the question asked. All right, that one is out of five. Okay, so like we said, one for givens, uh, one for conversions, one for t equals d over v, one for the answer for seconds on the truck, okay, and the car wins five marks. Okay, so give them a mark out of 12, let them see it, and put it in the box. Okay, so looking at number 11 here, guys. Number 11 is a lot like the one we did on the quiz. It's a two-part question. All right? We want to find the average velocity, both magnitude and direction. Well, which way do you fall? Down. That's easy. You got the direction. It's right there. Okay? That, part, that part's the easy part, figuring out what direction that'll be in. Okay? Now, um, we want to figure out, though, what's their total displacement and what is their uh, total time. All right? So, for part one where they're falling with the chute unopened, we know that the distance is 625 meters and the time is 15 seconds. In part two, they fall another 356 meters, but with the chute open, so obviously they're falling slower, and it takes 142 seconds. All right, everybody with me so far? All right. Do I have distance and time for both parts? Good, then I don't need to do any other calculating other than this. Average velocity equals total displacement over total time. All right, the total displacement is 625 plus 356, since both of them are down, right? They're in the same direction, I can just add them. And add the times, 15 plus 142. All right, so my average speed when I do that okay, should give me 6.25 meters per second down. Okay, does that make sense? That's about the easiest two-part question you would encounter because you, weren't, you didn't have to calculate D or T for any of the parts. Normally if I give you a two-part question, you'll probably have to calculate D for one and T for the other just like you did on today's quiz and then you can do total distance over total time. All right, so expect that it would probably work something like that. All right, any others? All right, then, keep going. Let's see how many of these we can get done. Okay, so this is number one on the second side. Now we're dealing with vectors. So direction now matters. And we have to remember that velocity, the V with the arrow over top, equals displacement over time. And displacement is how far you are from your starting position in a straight line. Everybody follow me there? So now, if I go up and back down, I'm not using the two distances added together. I'm using the two distances subtracted from each other so I know how far above the ground I end up. So essentially in this question, we start on the ground level, we go up 260 meters, and then back down 150. So we end up 110 meters above the ground or up from where we started. Everybody follow me there? Okay. Now the first part of the question asks, what's the woman's speed? Well, speed doesn't care whether I went up or down. It just cares how far I went. So I take the 260 and I add it to the 150 and I get my total distance traveled. Everybody okay with that? Yes? Okay, so we get what, 410 meters? Okay, 410 meters is our total distance traveled. We do that over the total time, which is, um, did it get cut off there? What's the total time? Well, trip takes a total of 240 seconds. I don't know why I did that. Okay, so the total time is 240 seconds. Okay, so when we do that operation, we should get our 1.71 meters per second. That should not have an up on it because it's scalar. 
Now, the second part, what's the woman's velocity? Well, velocity is displacement over time. So now I go 260 minus 150. That tells me how far I am from where I started, not how far I went. Everyone follow the difference there? Distance is how far you went. Displacement is how far you ended up from your starting position. Sometimes they're the same number. If you travel in a straight line, okay, and you only go one direction, they're the same number. But in this case, we backtracked. So for velocity, okay, we've got 110 meters up divided by 240 seconds. All right, so when we do that, we get 0.458 meters per second up. Okay, so just, I mean, it's essentially the same. You just have to remember now that direction makes a difference. Alex. Yep. All right, so jetliner travels at 350 kilometers per hour east for 45 minutes. I can already see right now I have a unit thing. I have to make sure that my units match. So I'm going to convert my minutes to hours. All right, 45 minutes is 0.75 hours. Everyone okay with that, right? It's three quarters of an hour. So for part one, I've got 300, my velocity is 350 kilometers per hour east. Okay, and the time there is 0.75 hours. For part two, uh, it's forced to turn around, so it travels west now, 375 kilometers per hour west, okay, and it does that for 30 minutes, which is 0.5 hours. Can I figure out how far it goes in total? Yeah, I just need to find the distance for each part. In fact, I'm going to find the displacement for each part, and then when I calculate how far it went, I just won't care which way. All right? I'm going to ask how far it wants distance. So D equals V times T. So for this one, that's going to be 350 times 0.75. Okay, so 262.5 kilometers for this one. kilometers east. Okay, and then for the second one, 375 times 0.5, right, should so 375 times 0.5 gives me 187.5 kilometers. Right, and that's west. Alright, so how far does the plane go? This number plus this number. Because how far is how far? It doesn't care which way you went. Right? Now, for part B, it says, what was its final displacement? Well, that means, how far is it now from where it started? Well, it went out and part way back. So I take this number here, the 262.5, and I subtract 187.5, okay? and I'll get the difference is 75 kilometers east. Okay? Um, Mr. Drodier's classroom, I think. Yeah. Right. And then uh, for the last part, it says, what's the plane's average speed over the whole trip? Well, average speed is distance, this number, over the total time, one and a quarter hours. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. So it's a little bit of thinking on that one for sure, because it asks you to do quite a few things in the one question. All right. Any others? All right, keep working on it, guys. We're going to spend time on this. When we come back after Easter, don't worry. We're going to review this because we'll all forget over Easter. All right, but work on it for now.